It's a new week, man. We here. Feel, best soup show ever. The best soup show ever. It's live, man. You feel me? We both got haircuts, you feel me? It's been a while, me and you both had haircuts at the same time. Or, you was out here thugging and bugging, looking rough, fucking mm. crazy. But you was calling yourself old dirty bastard? Yeah, fat dirty bastard. <laughs> fat dirty bastard. That's what it is. Out here looking nasty, man. Um, Pandemic is up, what's well, still going, but unemployment ain't been rocking. And I know people out there struggling, so I had to put on a shirt for y'all again. The block work shirt. It's a lot of block work being copped out here, man. It's good. It's been new this week, but what we got going on? <sighs> Music industry been crazy. Not it's only been... that, entertainment, basketball, so like everybody got some shit going on. Yes, sir. Um, there were certain things that we were talking about, and I, I don't know why I didn't write them down. Excuse me, y'all. That I've been going through a pretty, I won't say rough week. I would say busy week the last couple of weeks. So before we start, how you doing, bro? What's good? What's new with you, man? What's going on? You know me. Just you feel me. Just learning and stuff like that. I've been watching a lot of Wu Tang. I've been watching a lot of BMF. You feel me? Shows like that. Did we break down the last Wu Tang episode? I don't um, think we did. Not because I didn't watch it yet. I don't think. You did. But did you did you watch episode seven? I think it is where they went to the labels and shit like that. Yeah. Oh, so you watched the newest episode, right? Yeah. Okay, so we could talk about that. We ain't talk about that one yet. Yeah. When they went to that was the newest one. That's the latest one. Yeah, no, because it dropped every Wednesday, so the newest one's gonna be tomorrow. Yeah, 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 but I'm talking about the one most recent one. Oh yeah, it was, yeah, I watched that. I just finished watching that before I came here. Yeah, that was dope. Um, it's kind of giving a lot of gems, a lot of gold of what it was before to get signed, get heard, right? You, you see heard. how they call all the radio stations, like like the best. The one thing I learned about that episode, I want to say, is where um. The dude that was the bus driver, you know what I'm talking about? Mook. Shout out to Mook and I actually did a Zoom calls with Mook before. Shout out to Mook in the morning. You feel me? And, um, John Mook Gibbons. John Mook Gibbons, right? He played a role where he made it seem like their junk was high demand, and that's how he was able to sell it. Instead of just, like, just instead of just be like, yo, it's hey, my take, you feel me? That's something I learned. So with that concept, I was trying to figure out how I can make my business a high demand I said, just sell it to somebody like, yo, make them tonight. Like, there's some shit like that everybody wants to be on. You feel yeah. me? So I, I think it's a little different because of the digital age. Yeah. You kind of can do it, but it's got, I think that's how where bots come into play. Mm -hmm. But they just don't be like, people use bots, but not in the right situation. Right. They kind of come up with generic excuses and stuff. But what you're saying is absolutely right. So I was looking at that now. But I ain't gonna hold you, bro. The more I watch Wu Tang, the more love I got from them now, bro. Like, the more love. Like, you, like I remember one time you said sometimes legends are kind of forced upon us, say shit. I feel like the Wu Tang, because, you know, it's, it's like like good three eras before me. So I feel like that era was kind of forced on us. You feel me? They legends, they just accepted it. But after watching Wu Tang Clan, I, I'm really accepting it. I'm really starting to give them their respect, like, that they deserve for real, for real. Not just, like, how they came together, but as far as music, I'm really doing my research myself now. Yeah. Um. Yes. Sorry about that. I got an email or something. Um. So the thing and what Wu Tang is, they kind of reinvent because they changed the game. It's a nine man group. You know, people have never seen that yeah, one before. Never seen some shit like that you again. haven't seen it since. A nine man group that got signed as a group, and they didn't tell that part of their story. But then they all get signed as individuals, different labels. Right. So they was getting money hand over fist. Like we got the group deal, then you all got your individual deals. Right. Never gonna see that again. Riz and Rizza knew a lot of how the business was ran. <laughs> him and Jizz, and it was. That's why, team, that's why the team. That's why team is so important, bro. Like I see the shit Riz do, I'm like, yo, you know, funny shit. Ain't nothing better than a team and winning with your bros, bro. But the thing is, everybody want to be so big headed nowadays, bro. Everybody want to be the face of something, and nobody want to work together. It's the that's ego. Shit it, it, the ego. There you go. The ego plays a big part, and I'm like, damn. If you get people to be on the same page. Maybe one person takes the lead, and you just like the second nigga. You like go, you like Ghostface or something like that for the moment. But you still could be a leader at your in your own way. But even Bobby, they, look, even Bobby, like, uh, look how he took the um, look, look how he took a smaller role to his little brother. You feel me? That was kind of fire. What you uh, mean, Bobby? No, that's Riz's brother. Um, Bobby I mean, is Riz's brother. Bo yeah, Bobby's Bob, uh, brother's name. His brother. His, uh, yeah, I know you said about his brother. So. Um, what's his name? Um. 
It ain't not coming to my head. You know how the one I went to jail and stuff, the light skin, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 you feel yeah, me? Yeah. Like he did like he was a drug dealer, you feel me? He came home. He didn't really he didn't all the all the way like believe in the shit that his brother had going on because you feel me? He's like, bro, I have I got my job and shit, but he took his a, a took lesser role. Divine. Yeah, Divine, there you go. Divine took a lesser role. So his little brother can lead. And you know, a lot of people can't do that because they got that ego. Like, nobody but, who the fuck was going to say a little brother? See, and this is the thing too, right? Mm-hmm. RZA cuts through the bullshit, right? But he also makes everyone understand that their role is important to making everything work. Right. He's It's like, Wu-Tang is like Voltron. Yeah, you you got, you ever seen Voltron? No. Voltron is when they used to, it's like the, uh, it's like Power Rangers in a sense. They had like these, uh, Battle cats. Everybody had their own cat and all of that stuff, but each cat is a part. So Voltron, you bring them all together. You have one indestructible savior. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So with Divine, Divine had a, a business mind. A mind. Whether it was in the streets or not, he had a business mind and understood how things worked. Power, a person they were beefing with. Power knew how to hustle and he knew how to operate in the streets because he was still in it. So yeah. he was hot. Yeah. RZA knew how to compose the music. Ghostface Killer, Raekwon, Inspector Deck, Jizza, all phenomenal MCs. They was in the streets, but they they was in the streets, but they were phenomenal MCs as well. So right, what they did, and none of their rap style is the same. Jizza nickname is Genius. Hold on. Yo, gang, I'm on a pod right now. I'm gonna hit you back. Uh, I see. I seen Dog chilling with his cousin too, so uh, it's cool. But um, uh, old dirty bastard. He's named old dirty bastard because there's no father to his style. Like right, yeah, yeah. I, t- I seen he said that to that girl in the episode. Yeah, like, like, I'll be the baby to your. Uh, I'll be the baby to your child. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like it's everybody had they joint shotgun method, man. Mm-hmm. It was no. He he's different methods to his style. Like everybody has something that they, that the other person didn't have. Right. But it didn't make that person less unique than the next person. So right. People all understood that. Right. And that was definitely fire. Like I wish I wish we could do shit like that nowadays, but social media and all that shit play a big role and why people can't put their egos to Social side. media has pe- everyone feeling like they gotta be successful by thirty. And it's just everything is a process. Everybody's process is not the same. I think what I won't even say since social media, I feel like school plays a role because it like your parents play a role. I mean, your parents definitely play a role in all of that, but especially us being, we come from like backgrounds where like international yeah, backgrounds. Yeah. You feel where they hold us to higher standards. You gotta go to college route and do this and that. So we're not doing that college route all the way and not becoming doctors and lawyers. They look at you like, yo, what the fuck is this you gotta, kid doing? You gotta, you gotta kind of show them, yeah, for them to understand what's happening, right? And and that's the kind of the problem. People, everybody's journey is not the same, right? Again. We both started doing this media work four years ago. Right. Almost five years ago. You were coming out of high school. Right. I graduated from college. We were in two different spaces of life, but music is something that brought us together. Right. There's experiences that I've had. There's experiences that you had. There's things that you're expert in. There's things that I'm an expert in. And it's just making it work for each other. Out. What? You... You you done different kind of jobs to make money and stuff like that. Right. But this is what your passion is. Right. I worked in human services, yeah, social really services. Yeah. But now I'm fully into media, so right. You you can never really tell when somebody's going to do what they do. It just right. happens when it happens, and that's kind of what Wu Tang is kind of showing. Remember, the first three to get they deal was Old Dirty Jizza and RZA when he was Prince Rakim, and he had Jizza. So and it all didn't work out. Like it didn't it work out. How it, that Prince Rakim, I love you, Rakim record didn't do shit. Right. Then he came. He said, "I'm going with my brothers. We gonna work together. We gonna rock stuff." And then boom, protect your neck come out and shit goes crazy. Right. It's just a di- it's different. Right. It's everybody passed. Ain't no ain't no time limit on success. No cookie cutter <laughs> approach. And, that, and that's why exactly why I like what Benny the Butcher and Gazelle got going on. Not just. West Side Gun Conway, cause but you heard a stereotype. By the eight, time you're thirty, give up on your rap career. You feel me? I feel like being thirty four, West Side Gun and I'm like thirty six, thirty eight. I want to say. Nah, I'm like it's damn near forty. Forty? Oh yeah. So he like thirty. He, and he might be like thirty four, thirty five. Yeah. He's a couple years older than class. So yeah, and you hear most of the time, yo. By the time if you're not, not if you're not like 
on by 25. They try to make it seem like rap game is, is a young game industry. It's not. See, this is the this is why they tell them that too. And and you know how I know, Lil, because we we've been around. Right. They tell you it's a young man's game because when you come in young, you're eager and you're eager to sign because you don't know business and you just want to get paid. Right. And you want to go on tour and stuff. So that's how they catch you, and they full of the word that start with an R. I don't want to use that. I don't know how you two feel about that. It ends with an E. They kind of fondle you mm-hmm. through the business because you don't know better. Right. You're inexperienced. You don't have no money, and you don't have no connections. Right. Well, they so you know, so they know you need it. Like, they know like you, need, you don't have no leverage. So you're right. gonna be thirsty to sign for whatever. Right. And I'm not saying sign for whatever, but signing a deal definitely helps your celebrity because they can put you in that right position. That, yeah, networking. That other people can't put you in. Gunning them, they went through. They went. They went through because they really had to get their own money. Sat down, did they time? Gun Benny Conway, all that stuff. You Conway getting shot. And when it came to this point, they already had money. So it was like. I don't want nothing from you, but the connections and the relationships that help us, uh, we don't need money, and we know the business, so it right. helps them a little bit. But and they've been doing this so long, they probably got deals offered them be- like a, a long time ago, and it was like, Benny the Butcher still ain't signed no deal yet. That's crazy. There was a point in time, um, Shady Records didn't even offer him a deal, Shady didn't and, and, offer and, him and a it came and grabbed Westside and Conway, Every, and everybody thought, oh, so Benny signed, a, Benny wasn't, Benny's not signed yeah. to Shady. He not signed to nobody till this day. He has a management deal with Rock Nation, Nation, yeah. But he doesn't have a, a record label deal with anybody outside of, except for Griselda. And then he got his own with Black Soprano family. So, and I think he signed an E One Music with that deal, or nah, I think he got Empire. He's he's at Empire, if I'm correct. I he might be at E One. I don't know, but I think it's strictly distribution. It's right, yeah, distribution, yeah. That just shows you, and that but, gave it, that gave a lot of niggas hope with that. Yeah, but even when 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 Wes and them got signed, when Wes and Con- Benny wasn't really originally a part of it, because that's when Benny was still rocking. Yeah, away. he said they brought one law. Yeah, it was special and trust and all that at yeah. that time. So they looked out for him. So yeah, he's not. I don't know. He not, he won not part of the deal right now. It's just Griselda and Rock Nation management. Crazy. God, that's definitely fire. That's uh, definitely yeah. fire. Just people got to take these things and learn and, and understand how the industry runs and stuff like that. Right. Talk about egos. I, I know we were talking about music a little bit. I want to transition over to basketball. I got two topics to throw at you with basketball. You got the Kyrie Irving situation, right? As one of the star players, how do you feel about him not wanting to get vaccinated to play for the Brooklyn Nets? Because now before it was like he couldn't play home games, but now it's to the point where he can't even practice with the Nets or play any games at all. And, like, you say you got to put your ego to the side. How do you feel about him? I mean, it's his body, and I feel like he should always do what he believes is best for his body. Right. But there's, th- there's sacrifices that come with playing a professional sport. hmm And I understand why he doesn't want to get vaccinated. I have a person who has been on the cusp and understand about vaccination, but I also understand there's a certain opportunities. If I don't get vaccinated, I won't be afforded because I can't physically be there. Right. So I've been ha- I've had to do my own research, and if he said I did my own research, got some understanding, spoke to some medical professionals, and got the information that I feel like it was safest, and I made my what decision I made. Right. Understandable, but you have to understand also. The NBA can tell you the NBA is a private entity, so if they tell you you can't play, you can't play. Right. You can't make it. It's not a legal issue because this is not a a public thing or a government ran thing. This is a private organization. And you're part of the elite, the few elite that get to play in this game, and you're at the top of this. You're at the top, top of this of the game chamber, yeah. to make very make your, a very lucrative life for yourself. I'm not saying what he's doing is wrong. I'm not saying what he's doing is right. What he's doing is making himself a decision that's based heavily on his personal beliefs, and I will never knock nobody for that. And your personal beliefs, it kind of it could hurt the team, it could help the team, but who knows what's going to happen from that point on. But the story of Kyrie Irving is going to be always more about the things that he's done off the court than what than what he's done on the court. Uh, and I definitely agree. And I and I I'm I'm kind of happy he's standing on that because now I feel like you know how being a, being a role as an NBA player like he has some type of like influence on the youth. You feel me? Yeah. And with him being like, 
I I don't want to take the vaccination because you telling me to. No, he's sacrificing. Like yo, I don't want to do it for the better cause. I'm not mad at him. You feel me? Because certain people like certain people that like would be like, I just want to get paid. I'm going to do it. You feel me? And he's like, nah, I don't care. I don't want to do it. So he's like, he's standing up for what he believes in. Yeah, but and this is the thing that comes into play too. The platform that you have, which is the NBA, right? If you're not playing. You don't have that same platform. Nah, I think he's built. A, I think he's built a name and a brand gonna, for himself. Gonna, he's gonna get looked. It's gonna be slighted though. Colin Ka- so him and Kaepernick is not the same situation at all. Right. To get this clear, but Colin Kaepernick's platform came from playing in the NFL. That's a fact. When he went against the NFL, his platform they they, they yeah they kind of was very. But well, football, I want to say football and basketball kind of different because with football, even though you're a star, like. That's more about the team. In basketball, you could be a star and go play for, like, like I want to what I'm really going to say is if Kyrie to go overseas, I feel like he could be the same star he is in America. That's what I mean. But if Colin Kaepernick was to go to a different league, I don't think he could be that same star. Yeah, because. Because basketball and football star. The, like, le- the, the levels, the amount of pro- professional teams, because football is American, American football is an right. American sport. So it's different than now. I'm I'm saying even if he was to go to like a um like uh another like minor football team a minor yeah, football league, still, they're still not as big and yeah. Stuff like that. So but like if if Kyrie was to go to the G League or something like that, that'd be a big thing. I still feel like he had yeah. the same platform. He's not, like, he's not. He's gonna have the platform, but he's gonna be slight. People look at how people talk about Kyrie now. Oh, Kyrie. He so he said the Earth is flat. He said he don't know if he wants to play basketball anymore. So people don't think Kyrie wants to play the game of basketball. Right. They look at him more as a distraction than being a player. Right. And he has a lot of things that proves that, well, doesn't prove, but leans towards him being more of a distraction than him being a benefit to being on the team. All right. So that's those are the things that make it difficult. And, again, it's a lot of misinformation on both sides about being vaccinated and not mm-hmm. being vaccinated. And it's really about doing what's best for you, and you have all right. Larry Sanders did the same shit. Larry Sanders said, "If I can't, if I can't smoke weed and play in the NBA, I'm not gonna play in the NBA." Right. So he left. But Kyrie got to understand what do you what are you willing to leverage and give up? This is a year. This so you're telling me you're willing to give up a chance at a possible championship because you don't want to get vaccinated. Right. So. When you do come back, is the team going to embrace you the same way or look at you as a selfish motherfucker? Or selfish individual, I should, I should say. Uh, that was my next question. How, as KD, cause, you know, KD came to the next because Kyrie like, told him to come to. Yeah, and but he got, Harden, he, got, he got James Harden. So. Yeah, and then James Harden. Now, but you got to think about it. If you could lose anybody out of those three, Kyrie Irving is the one that you would let go. All right, that's say Kyrie Irving, he, he's not more productive than Harden. He's not more productive. He's not more unstoppable than Kevin Durant, and he doesn't play. Great. He can defend, but he's not the best defender. So, Word. all right. So then another situation with like we, you know how we just talk about with Eagles and stuff like that, right? I know you couldn't wait to bring this one. Up. Yeah, you feel me? We heard the things that B said about Ben Simmons. We heard what the things Ben Simmons said about him. B. We heard the things Doc Rivers has said about it, um, Ben Simmons, right? But it has gotten to the point where Ben Simmons has decided to return the team because you feel me? They were taking too much money from his like contract. So how do you feel it's gonna be like in the locker room, like uh, the whole mindset? Do you think he's gonna be out there playing good, or is he gonna be out there like I'm just here to like I get traded? I think he's just gonna put his best foot forward and be productive in whichever way he has to be. All right, now do you feel like that relationship could be like kind of squashed? It could be put behind. He's gone, regardless of what happens after that. He's gone. So like, let's say let's say they win games together. You think that they could put that to the side or not? Nah? Probably for a year, but it won't. It won't last long. It won't last long. He's gonna. He's whether he plays finish the season or not with the Sixers, he's going after this year. He got three years left on his contract. They're gonna trade him because <laughs> they, what this you said three years from right now, right? No, it's four years from right now. So next year's gonna be three. They're, they'll be able to trade him. And then he, I think he's getting paid something. I feel like he just gotta come out there and play good. If he plays good, they get him gone by February at least. It's not about him playing good. He doesn't want to be there. Now I'm saying, but he, he has no value in the league right now. Nah, that's not true. Because they didn't even want to, like, like that, I mean. It's because they wouldn't trade CJ McCollum for him. It's just because it probably wasn't a good trade at the time of what they was getting. It's probably, like, they wanted. Probably now, six, Portland turned it down. But I'm saying, they, pro- they probably felt like they could have got more at that moment because of what the narrative is. But 
Ben Simmons' value is not going nowhere. Ben Simmons is Ben Simmons. You, he just has to be on the right team. Mm. And Portland wouldn't have been a good team for him anyway because he's not. he has to be on the team where he's surrounded by guys that can shoot the basketball and not clog up the paint. Even though Embiid does shoot threes, Embiid is best when he's playing with his back to the basket. That's a fact. Nah, I just want to see your take. But, yeah, another thing that I was tr- – another thing that um, – I see it come across my timeline with the Black China rant. Yes, I seen you, I seen that post. I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, Black China might get canceled, man. Just not only, all right, it's okay that you want to come at somebody for the vaccine for not being vaccinated. Right. But when you want to say that's why you're poor, and the party's gonna remain you, poor. You're gonna remain poor. Now you do. Now what you're doing is something. It's like a bullying. It's unnecessary. Then you want to say I'm a real ass B word from DC, DC to Atlanta I, I, I to Miami. LA. Yeah. It's Miami to, to that. LA. First of all, real rap. For, show, Black China, stop. <laughs> like real rap, what? Nothing about you is real. <laughs> you got to chill. That. We know where you came from. We came from humble beginnings. We're not knocking none of that. But all of this other stuff that you're doing, sure that you've been rich and you purposely got pregnant by two very Tiger and men. Wiz Khalifa. Without them, you would probably not Wiz Khalifa. Tiger and who? Rob, Rob Kardashian. Kardashian. My fault, my fault. Rob Kardashian. Well, I thought Wiz Khalifa. Man. Amber Rose. Amber Rose. Yeah. Like, like you would probably still be working at a strip club, bro, if it wasn't for them. Yeah, and and, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But you, like, you would, you would have been still looking for your, your come up lick. That's what you did. You got it. You had a come up lick, and nothing wrong with that. You could say, what's, 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 what's about to say nah, before? I just think I just she forgot like she could be one of them. Tell like poor all the personal actors are for for a photo from what like the the background story, and then you yeah. going to on them like that. What's like, your TV on there? I don't know. Fifteen. Oh, if you reach it. I wouldn't, like, me, me personally, I'm not a fan of her. I don't even know what she do. I don't think she looks that good. That's just me personally. Oh. Me, I don't, I me don't, personally, I don't think she looked that good. I've never been a fan of her. Like, I think and she, I seen she her like giving a head. Her, I seen her giving a head. That shit was weak, so there's nothing, like, value. Oh, I'm dead. Her. Oh, man. You got it. You got it. I, I ain't going to all that now. I ain't, I ain't see all that. Nah, it's the one on the bottom. It's the first button on the bottom. Right here? No, no, no. On the yeah. All the way in the back. Oh. There you go. I don't remember. I, I remember they had posted on Twitter. Yeah, I mean. So at that freaky, like I don't. For me, I don't see no value in her right now. She messed with men that are well to do. It's not her fault. It's what she chose. She likes what she like. Nobody knocking that. I don't know. Bro. What the fuck are they plugged in? So I don't know. I I ain't knocking that. But shorty, you gotta relax, man. You can't be out here talking about. What people do and don't do and all this kind of stuff. Like, you need these people to, bruh. Like, that's what she's forgetting. You need people to like you so you can still be getting booked for walkthrough appearances and stuff like that. Cause you're yeah, not, yeah, because you don't rap. <laughs> you're not going to make money off rap. You're not doing anything. Uh-oh, does she even got love and hip hop behind her? No. She never been, like, no. She feel like she's too good. She's a Kardashian baby mama. Man, ain't nobody too good for love, love and hip hop. Damn, how's it mess up this stuff again? Probably should have tried that before we started recording. 
Oh yeah, man. Black China, it's beyond me what you're doing. I don't understand what you're doing and why you thought it was okay to berate someone like that in public. Well, she don't even know she lost fans like that, bro. She gonna uh, come out apologizing. Like, why? Just give it like 48 hours. I'm sorry. If, if you don't understand the vaccination, you shouldn't get it. Blah, blah, blah. Nigga, we don't go. Fuck. At least if, I don't. I mean, if someone don't want to get the vaccination, you can't just talk to them all. It's the same way with people. Like, I tell people, oh, uh, 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 this person got the vaccination and you, uh, uh, man, listen. They did what's best for them. As we've been saying from the beginning, do what is best for you. Um, it was something Joe Biden was talking about on the Joe Biden podcast. Kodak, Kodak Black. For sure. Yeah, I'm on live. You talking about sit the fuck down. Wanted to talk about Kodak. Actually, Fresh and Fit, too, because he was on the Fresh and Fit podcast. Oh, yeah, you said white 100, too. Oh, yeah. See, now things are coming to my mind. I don't know why I couldn't think before, but um. I was about to so say. let's go with Kodak Black first, though. Kodak Black. Yeah. I honestly, bro, like me personally, I don't know how certain you know certain he's Haitian. I I never seen him do this before. Certain cultures they do their things differently. We would feel like as un, un like unnur unnur what's the word unnecessary. Un, no un ordinary ordinary. Unordinary. Un- 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 that's the word. Unordinary. Un- yeah, unordinary. Un- I don't know why I can't say it right. Say ordinary. Ordinary. And then un. 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 Ordinary. Unordinary. Un- yeah, here we go. It's <laughs> <laughs> coming out the tongue right Hey, <laughs> man, we have a grammar class in here today, too. <laughs> so yeah, like, because, you know, I feel like for like my culture, some people see some shit like, yo, that's not, like, that's not regular, you feel me? So maybe that's just something they do in their culture, but. I, what he would? I, I heard was he smacking culture? his mom behind or something weird like that. Yeah, he smacked his mom and he tried to kiss her in her mouth type that. And the, oh, well, well, well. Uh, like, yeah, like that sounds like. I bro. know some cultures people people still kiss them, but smacking the ass too. That's uh, like he that's they came and grabbed it like it was. Kind of, oh uh, man, I don't know. I, so I, that I don't, see, I don't, I don't, see I don't, me me personally, I don't want to say too much. Cause I don't want to judge nobody's culture, but. Like in American culture, that's not it. Even like where the culture, I come Americanized from. culture. Yeah, absolutely. Americanized we're not, culture. We not we not we not doing that. And like I understand sometimes people dance with their mom. Like hey, you know, having fun. Yeah. All the dancing that was cool. Hugging your mom from behind. That's the, that's your mom. People don't really look at it that way. But smacking, grabbing her, grabbing some cheek and kissing her mouth is a, a little bit much. That was crazy. I mean, I'm hoping the internet but, was lying to us, and that's not his mom. That's like his mom friend that like. But um. I think na- so now I understand because I've seen a video. What? That's weird. That's yeah. That's different. That is different. Yeah, cause yeah, she not jack. His mom not even jacking it. So yeah. So shout out to TDE Punch because Punch was saying academics had posted that, but he didn't post that video. Right. Punch was saying he doesn't know what's going on with Kodak. Like he. Like, that's a little unnatural for him. Punch, I agree with you. I did not see that part of the video. That's why I didn't comment when I seen what was put up. Mm. That's uh, that's different. Mm. That is different. So, yeah, we'll see We'll see how that goes. Um, Yeah, I don't got, I don't got much to say on that Yo, one. I'm going to leave, I'm gonna leave, you, leave talk you. Talk about here. something that's just trending. This came out of nowhere, bro. Ming Mill under fire at the fan spot. His tour bus wrapped in a new album cover out. Uh, where it's, it's puts a splits image of black women, and I look at it, and it's like females bent down and shit. Let's see. For explicit. Uh, I understand expensive pain. Uh, it's art. I think I think people definitely gonna feel away about certain things. Yeah. I can't be mad at how they feel. But that's what we would they rather him put white women? Is that what they would have been going crazy if you put white women? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm just saying, I like something I'm feeling like people regardless happy, of bro. what he was because of the movements of society that he was damned if he did, damned if he don't, whatever he put up there, regarding with women. And this is it's just what it's just him displaying that's his reality. And his reality, he tours women, thought he goes to strip clubs, strip, the strip clubs he go to probably, right? The most of the women that are there are black and Latino women, right. Or women of some descent of, of of color, they like to use the word to say. So, 
you know what's crazy? Females are upset about that, um, these images, right? But they're not upset about what Bar Bernice was doing with her daughter. You feel me? Showing her how to twerk. But Mel's is upset saying, like, yo, that's what you know you don't have a... Like, so you just can't make people happy because yeah. I feel that's kind of the same narrative. You feel me? Like, Absolutely. Bernice teaching her daughter, like, to twerk or, like, influence it. And niggas saying she don't got no male figure. But when when a male does it, females are mad. Like, that's how you look at women. And then women and men are looking like, yo, he got a bad bitch bent over. Type. So you just can't make nobody happy. It all depends who you come, who is coming from and who does it. Like, if, from a male perspective, a female is not going to allow it. But f but from a, male, from a male to male perspective, a male is going to embrace that. But when a female do something shit like that, a male is going to be like, who the father figure is, but another female is going to embrace it. Like, yo, she's being herself. So that's how yeah. I feel. So it's weird. Absolutely. I, I don't disagree with you. I think it comes to, we, there's a disconnect and understanding between men and women, and we don't understand about a lot of the things that each other want or how we view things. Mm -hmm. And it gets real deep. And I, honestly, we might, I might have to bring you on an episode of Jungle Report. We can have some of those deep deep dive conversations. Yeah. For real. Right now, we're playing NCAA. I couldn't find my other controller. Well, my other Xbox, for some reason, not turning on. So, couldn't work best in 2K at the Stop moment. It. Um, let's go. Do you want to go right to Rap 100? Yeah. Well, all right. So, what you want to talk about? What, what, part, what part caught your attention so in that interview? That whole interview was actually funny to me. Yeah, that was good. Gilly, I think... Entertaining as fuck. Entertaining. Gilly and Wallow definitely did selective politics. As sure. far as as far as when it comes to snitching? To when it comes to what you're supposed to stand on when you talk about doing gangster stuff. I think they definitely selective politics. I think that... Wack also be doing some funny stuff, and I rock with Wack. I think Wack. I don't got no issue with Wack. People in New York be talking about what they talking about. I personally have no issue with Wack One Hundred. God damn, not supposed to be a touchdown. So, um, what do you want to? You want to start with the? So let's go. Let's select the politics uh, first. All right, the, no, go. We go. We want to go first. Let we me go know. with the Meek Mill. They said like Meek Mill was for the stand. No, Meek Mill was for the stand on what he said he's gonna do to uh six nine when he seen him. Or yeah. you want to talk about the game part? We could go. We could. Go, we could go with the six nine. We could go with the. Let's go again because game part happened first actually. Yeah. So. It when it, Gilly has said it at some point. If you say to a man you gonna do this that and the third to a man when you see him, you gotta. You got to be willing to stand on, on you that, what you said. Right. Meek Mill, which Wack 100 kept trying to say, y'all defending him because he's from Philly, but he says he's going to do certain things when he sees certain people, and he don't stand on it. Right. You want to do things to Safari and um, what's other old boy named Quentin Miller, but... You don't want to do nothing 6 9 You didn't want to do or game. I remember one game with the Philly. He was eating the oh, cheese yeah, steak. Cheese steak yeah, he was cooling with like um some of the um niggas from. That's how the whole Beanie Siegel shit happened. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like so, you got you got if you're gonna say it, when you go out there and say oh I'm, like if something happens and this is why I agree with Wagner. Some if something happens, and it's not your business, it's not your business. Like yeah, Wack is a, is 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 power or whatever from what he stated. You feel me? Not nothing that's not per, that public records. Right. Power rule from the West Coast, from the Valley, wherever, he went, wherever he's from, people want to say he's from. I've been hearing, yo, he's from the Valley, uh, 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 whatever. Oh, what's going on? I still caught that. From the Valley or whatever, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Cool. What happened on the East Coast, not his business. They told him not to get involved from his accounts. So for people to sit there and say, oh, I expect Wack to do this, or I expect, if Meek never said nothing to, about boy, do anything to Daniel, you, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Nobody would expect me to do nothing because you ain't never said you was going to do nothing. Right. You've seen something. But you said he's bad for the culture. You want to get him out of here. You threaten academics. You threaten son, whatever the case may be. For, for With their academics for rocking with son, saying you're going to make sure that son is out the industry. Like It's been documented that you said you were colluding with 21 and you know, other people to get boy out the industry. Hell uh, yeah. So when son... Regardless of what people want to say, oh, that's a dummy mission. He got cops. Me got off duty police with him too. Me had cops with him too. They both they had all cops. have off duty cops with them. Like, like let's should. not play this game, bro. They all rap. They're rappers. Like this is what people. Are, I get tired of hearing people saying, oh, this, that, and the third. They're rappers. They're not gangsters. If they was gangsters for real, they like they would. It'd be a whole. It would be a lot of what's going on in Chicago. What's going on in Jacksonville? A lot of that going on. 
What's happening in uh in uh for Baton Rouge? Baton Rouge. Like, come on, man. It'd be a lot of that going on. These dudes is rappers. Meek been famous for over ten years. I don't expect Meek to handle things how he would handle his stuff in the street when ten years ago. But it's it's part of the growth. Exactly. And it's not and it's all you gotta do is separate the two. Stop talk stop talking about what you're gonna do to somebody. It's like, bro, just chill. You not the person that's out here regulating nothing. You not regulating like, nothing in your own city. And it goes back to like I don't know if you ever heard of do pop pop hunter. Remember that? Um, yeah, not I heard. pop hunter. Uh, damn, it's a cat of Philly that was mad at Meek Mill. Um, that, he, that Meek tried to sign for yeah, like twenty bands, ten k, yeah, ten bands. Yeah, 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 he was saying Meek Mill's contradicted to contradicts himself. You feel me? Because how are you gonna tell everybody when it comes to Young Boy and Lil Dirk beef? You gotta pick a side. But then he telling the cats in Philly, like, yo. They come together and all Come this. together. Like, put real murder beef behind, like, th- that's been going on for years and years and years. That, like, yo, it's co- I'll get y'all signed if y'all put y'all beef to the side. Like, Exactly. Selective politics, man. And that's what has been a lot of what goes on. But again, for me, that ain't none of my business. I don't care. Mm. I know that was a pig. But it just goes back to me being a con- He be contradicting himself. And he got he to gotta stop it. And Gilly and Wallow did it on there, too, because they... They knew that it was things that Wack was saying, which is true. You like, yo, they're like, oh, they they wanted to play with old oh, Wack. You only beat up that fat, fat white guy. Uh, ha, ha, ha. But Wack said, bro, listen, I'ma stand on mine. I'ma invite people to scrap, and it's gonna be what it's gonna be. All right. I can't be mad at that. You could think he a goof. You could think he whatever, but he willing to scrap with you and stand on his. I've been on Clubhouse, so people came at Wack, and they like, yo, I'm from the. I'm from wherever. Uh, uh, uh. I, I, I know, I know, uh, I know Unc. Uh, uh, uh. Boom, boom, boom. He like, well, if you know Unc, hit him. Tell him we can set it up in his joint, his backyard, and we can get down. Right. Whack don't be ducking no phase, Man, he don't bro. Duck the smoke. He don't duck no phase, bro. You might not like him, but he not gonna no, duck the phase. That's a fact. Me, will be trying to like pick on the niggas that he know want to stand up for himself, like with the yeah. academics, with the, with the uh Quinn Miller, with the uh. Even I think he was bullying Louis V. Gutter. Remember his OR Dream Chaser that uh got his chain took. People, I want to say people that he think pe- Meek will go at people that that are, are don't seem like they'll fight back. Right. And even though like and knowing that he got more clout than that, everybody's gonna be on his side. Yeah. Even but even with act though, right? Even with act, it don't work. Cause act Cause don't care. Act people. This is the thing with act. Act don't gotta be tough. It's people around act that's tough. Act makes sure a lot of people's families eat. He's a brand, so you think people are gonna let you just beat his ass? Never. Come on, bro. Best you don't you you like you say you not gangster, but people a lot of people work with you and they get and they, they got they, enough love for me where they, not they have love you. for you and they do business with you. They, 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 you think somebody's gonna let something happen to you? Never. They're gonna be like, yo, bro, you need to relax. And that and, and, and it was funny that I think about it. I remember Mick Mill tried try that narrative with Drake when the for beef first started. He was trying to use that street narrative. And you see that shit didn't work out. <laughs> so he had no choice but to take that L. It's got to be tight. Because you can't play that street shit with Drake because uh, he got it's, uh, it's, Jay it's, Preston with him. And he, he got a whole country behind him. Right, Toronto too. He got a whole country. Like, not just Toronto. He has a whole whole Canada's behind Drake. So I he, said can- Toronto, I meant Canada. He got the whole <laughs> Canada behind him. So people be just be talking, and I'll just be trying to figure out why, why the hell you keep throwing football like that. Whatever, I'm about to just play with my role to grow this person. Um, it's, it's just, to me, it's just like, and we use a Mika as an example. He's not the only one. Yeah, I got I got one. love for my son, but I've seen my son at times do some selective he politics. He attacked uh, Troy Abbott. Uh, and, uh, and, and they, they and called it the straightening episode, but like I said, Wack do things that, Wack definitely knows how to get under people's skin. Wack knows how to talk his way out of things. There's things that Wack do that sometimes is a little uncalled for. But that's just how he get. That's how he move. And I ain't gonna tell another person how to move because that's what you do, not what I do. So it be what it be. Uh, no, but for now, for the, with the whack episode, I took a lot. I took what I took from him. He was like, "Yo, Meek just be challenging people. They don't want to fight back. And when you respond to him to fight back, and you can stand up for yourself, it's like he don't want no more smoke no more. You see him in the game, that just happened mad quick. The game came with Benny Siegel and shit like that." Make sure you can get serious and just ASAP you out of there like that. Just and, and it just died I'll down. I'll say this too because the people ask, "What's the issue with academics?" 
Everybody know academics is a Drake stand. He's an OD Drake stand. He tries to be unbiased, but he's a little biased towards Drake. Wait, that's going to come with life, you feel me? Yeah. He felt like academics was pushing a narrative that Drake was beating him in this battle. Which is not just an which, academic which is, narrative. But the thing, and the thing is this, and Wack is right. If you don't post something, I may post something. If I don't post something, you and a bunch of other blogs may post something. So if whether if academics said it or not, somebody else was going to post it. And people would be saying, like, and, and Wallow, I, rock, I got mad love for Wallow, but Wallow says some OD institutionalized jail drink. He said, you don't think that it's, it's things in place that targets certain people? No, it's not, bro. Like, I mean, it is, but they don't purposely go and target Meek Mill. Meek Mill put himself out there for... He gives a lot of opinions on things that he don't have to. And he don't got to speak on it. It goes back to like what they say, Twitter fingers. Yeah, like and everybody, everybody. Like, that's what happens social media. Everybody allowed to get their opinion on something, but when you say something, you just got to be, be able to deal with the consequences, even if people agree or disagree. I don't think anybody's talked about on social media as much as Drake. Because he's the biggest artist. That's what's gonna happen. Like, like, like in hip hop. So, like maybe Drake, Jay Z, Jay Z don't be on social media. And we see people. We've seen things about Jay Z. It talks about every day. Every once in a while, people come up and they bring the Jay Z narratives up. Nobody talking about Jay. Like I mean, Jay not on there talking about things. He's not on there. I don't, like he don't even use his Twitter for for he probably t- when he tweets it's he a big tweets, ass deal. He tweets like once a year. <laughs> it's a big ass deal. And he said he like yo I I like Twitter a lot, but I can't use that stuff because no, nah. <laughs> like right. he likes it. He he, t- he said it on Rap Radar. I like Twitter and stuff a lot. I like to, to be able to engage with the, to well get out to the world what I be thinking, but it's not always it's a time and place for everything. And, and like it's like you gotta know what, like as as the status me mill is he gotta know when he can say certain stuff and not say stuff. You know how we might feel some type of way about certain stuff. We might not speak on it because we know like it's not it's not gonna sit right with social media. Even if we believe in it, like how we using how we using the Kyrie situation right now. You feel me? Kyrie could have been like a lot of other players and just, I for me, I just got to go with the narrative, but Kyrie decided to speak on it. He's mm-hmm. going to deal with the consequences, the backlash that come from it. That's what happened with Meek Mill. Sometimes you just got to like, ah, I got to take that L. But if you're going to speak on something, you got to be able to deal with the backlash you that gotta come from be, it. It's, whatever you do, you have to be able to deal with what comes with it after the fact. And Meek don't be wanting to deal with what comes with it after the fact. And it's like, yo, bro, you can't be mad at the outcome of a situation. And think you can't have your feet in one foot in. I'm being, I'm being a street rapper, and then the next foot, I'm a, I'm a multi millionaire. It don't work that way. Like you could be a street guy, but that's a multi millionaire. Look at Yo Gotti. Got, we know we know <laughs> Gotti don't even talk like that. And that's what I, that's my point. <laughs> and then one time he did it was the Angela Simmons situation. <laughs> but we but we know we know Yo Gotti resume. Right. We he don't he, Yo got we know Yo Gotti ain't rocking with what, what old boy did. We know Birdman ain't rocking with what old boy did. But you see bro- how Birdman called Wack hundred personally. He ain't make no tweets man, about it. All right, man, listen, I ain't feeling what you're saying. But Wack wanna scrap with me. That's what he said. He said, listen. Now that's cause the like, social media that built that like me talk talk like he wanted to do that to him, bro. He told he like he said, he said, listen, man. On the joint, he said, "Yo, whack, what's good with you and my son? Me and my son, we talked. It got a little heated. Uh, uh, uh. My smart guy. Yo, yeah, whack, that. what's good with you in twenty one? Me and twenty one is cool. What's good with you and me? Me and me gotta get it. Nah, that's because <laughs> hey. Mick was talking like he was like, you feel me? Like, but that's me, what I'm me, saying. Yeah. Like, I understand the issue that Gilly and him had with, with, with academics too, because I know for sure." Academics is not talking crazy to my song like that if they in a room by themselves. You know, my so song, <laughs> it's that liquor that he be drinking. Nah, but I also understand his frustration too because he feel like he getting picked on. Yeah, but I know what was gonna happen if he would have ever said that to my song, going like that in my song face, and it's just them two with nothing else. My song might smack the shot. That it's boy. gonna get worse than smack the shot. We got my song really went to prison for real. Like yeah, but like I feel like my song mature enough that he not gonna crash out. Nah, he not gonna crash out. But if nobody did. Just nah, he gonna dog him. He, he Ain't nobody there. Nah, nah, I don't think he gonna. I don't think my son. I don't look at my son like a bully. Bully. I feel like he's gonna. Smack it's not him a gonna be times. a bully. It's we both in this room. What you had to say, you talked a little crazy, and I'm not feeling with what you're saying. So as men, I want my thirty. Right. And then you move from there. Right. I've seen Meek Mill punch a punching bag. <laughs> I I can't believe that he just gonna whoops like 
I don't think Daniel could fight like that. The game? Oh, at all. Daniel. Daniel. Oh. Well, he I, don't, probably... I, don't, I don't think he could scrap. But I don't think me could just whoop his ass either. There's going to be a lot of uh, what's called hugging, grabbing. Yeah. Hugging and grabbing. <laughs> yeah. So that's me personally. So I've seen Meek box and... I got, I, man, listen, I got a lot of people that I, I don't think Meek Mill could see in a scrap. Um, he probably, that's why he got O'Malley. O'Malley's like, oh, he's been a protector kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, but like, O'Malley can't save you from everything, brother. Yeah. I fuck with Meek, but just. I rock with Meek. I like expensive paint. I like I like certain songs on expensive paint, too. Thing. So if you haven't heard that it yet. It is, like, lately, like, with social media, it's certain shit he just left alone. Like, he's just, just too, he too involved in things that he don't got to be in. Mm-hmm. And that's been my issue with me. Like, yo, we all hypocrites to an extent. You feel me? But like, it's a like you got a lot of stuff out there of you being hypocritical of the things you say. You say you gonna do this when you see this person, you ain't do it. Why you ain't do it? It's the same thing like what people say to Dirk. Yo, Dirk, it's cool that you rap about this stuff, but your but your homies. <laughs> yeah. Your homies out and ain't it ain't looking too good for them. And if Dirk made it worse, but do you hear what he said in the um what he said in the uh uh, uh what the Who Wants Smoke with Me that that new song? He said he said some shit like um we got it back in blood, but y'all just don't know like or some shit like that. And then NBA people was like, yo, them niggas didn't get shit back in blood. So now you bringing the like now you bring the feel back onto you. Now it's like you're not living up to what you really say in your raps, bro. He just got certain shit. Just got can't just don't speak on, bro. And just let it go. Just let it go. Just or people let gonna it continue, go. or people gonna continue to say like, "Yo, you ain't get it back in front, or you ain't get it back like this." You got to about Dirk been in the streets for so long, bro. Like, and he's been beefing the niggas since he's third, sixty four. But it's not to like, like it's not to like it. We don't even know if he got it back in blood for them niggas. You feel me? But he never really spoke on them. He never gave them a light and shit. Just you know, when he started saying he got it back in blood and shit like that, that's when niggas start like, "Yo, Dirk, you might be capping a little bit, bro." Yeah, I mean, I mean, we we know we know it's entertainment, but again, his ops got you made your ops famous. So now, when you saying certain things, your ops gonna be like, "This is not true." Right? You, you keep speak on it. They gonna speak on it, and that's your fault for making your ops famous because a lot of your early music, you got, or a lot of your early music came from dissing people. Now you're both dissing each other, like yeah, but that's how you got you got famous mostly from that though. He blew up from that. Not people from sixty third wasn't blowing up for real like, off that music. Man, he they was. blew up. They just but turned narrative. they was they was never D- Dirk level. Come on, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We let's be real. People, we got people all over the country screaming that they not from sixty third, and they never been to sixty third in their life. That's a fact. So that proves how much what Dirk and Vaughn and them was doing was like weight was to a higher degree than what any of them did. Mm. Even with Ruga with the GD Anthem joint, I rock with that song. I think that song is wildfire. But that's it's not third year that's going to hurt, hurt him right now. If we way bigger, exactly. So we, people just got to be careful with what they say, man. Like everything not meant for you to be like, yo, I'm gonna do this to that person, and I'm gonna do this to this person. Man, listen, just chill. And but when you say something, especially when you're coming from a street perspective, you got to stand on what you say. Mm-hmm. If I get up on here and I say I'm gonna smack ah 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 when I see this nigga, you gotta do that shit. The same when thing, I, when it, I see it, that nigga and, and it's same, smoke. It's the same thing in Rochester. Like, you catch a nigga, you tell a nigga you're going to smack him in school the next day. What you think everybody looking to do now? They're going to build a fire. You seen them yet? You seen them yet? You seen them yet? And then, yeah, don't fight. Everybody looking at you like, you pussy, you pussy. It's the same thing happened in high school every day. Yeah, yeah. Even not even not even just in high school out here. Like now I'm just saying, like, you know, yeah. how you used to be on social media in high school. You say you're gonna do this and that to somebody in the second period. Everybody's waiting for that shit to happen. If it don't happen, everybody calling you pussy, even if it was the right decision. Which is an unfortunate fact. You feel the situation. Because you can't put no energy out in the air, and then when it's time to like, and then change. When it's it, time yeah. to get down to yeah. it, you're not doing it. It's like it's like a street nigga. You say you're not gonna snitch when you get in that room. You better not snitch. That's why everybody look at you like, bro, you ain't stand on what you said you was gonna do. Yeah, that's, that's all that shit is about. But but and at the same time, we also got as a people got to understand that most people don't stand on the shit they say they gonna do. They just don't. Yeah. That's also the other the other reality that we don't like to admit. Motherfuckers is not standing on nothing. That's why we embrace Bobby Smyrno so much, because he stood on, like, the sh- no, no snitching code. Yeah. We seen it. He took extra time for Roddy. 
Yeah, bro. niggas Boosie. Niggas, yo, no question. Somebody told me like something like, yo, Boosie ain't been on like the top one hundred since he's been out of jail or nothing like that. But we embrace him because he the real nigga shit he did in jail and shit like that. Exactly. Standing on what he believed in. That's why Boosie gets all the love right now. Um, fuck up the top Damn, I, I thought I was charging the computer the whole time. Yeah, but what you're saying, everything what you're saying is right. I'm not just, I ain't got, got nothing to disagree with you on. I guess so. Wack had things he was right about. Gillian Waddle had things he was right about. Everybody has things that they write about just about doing the drink to the best of your ability, for real. And the one thing I agree on that um he said he's like you gotta separate the business from the streets. Baby. Absolutely. And he said when he like he said I guess they sat they asked him a question like yo what do your big homies think about um you sitting down talking to uh, it's not he yeah. said he said they just, they can't say nothing because this is business you feel me and I and, I, and what I, and the thing is social media got people wrapped up into thinking what they say matters. I, like I said I don't agree for things that. I agree when he told him that he's not a gangster. Mm -hmm. I don't agree. And, and also just think Wallow said, I don't agree. Wallow, you are wrong. People that wear suit and ties do put hits out on people. Oh, yeah, that's a fact. I, I don't that. know where you got that. Pe suit and tie guys are not playing. You're bugging. <laughs> where do you think a lot of this money comes from? Like, have you you know, there's dirty cops out there. There's all types of dirty Bro, guys. A lot of these business people that got money, they got abundances of resources. Yeah, they wear suits and ties. and put. They have the money to put the hits out. I don't know where he got this that that's not happening from. That's just not reality. Because he was just trying to pay the image of 6 9 Yeah, he... but regardless, I agree with him when he said things, certain things. I think some of the things he did, making money with him, that's business, that's nothing. Some of the things was definitely a little egged on, but at the same time, it's nobody to blame but the guys that brought him onto the set. Y'all yeah. brought him around and gave him his power. Wack was trying to tell him they brought you around in a certain capacity. You should have never surpassed that capacity to make certain decisions. Right. So I, I definitely agree with the fact when he says that his he don't do no street business for boy. He don't do no street business. All they do is regular business and make money together. That's it. Oh uh, yeah, I definitely agree with that. But you said, you got you got to. Nah, I, I like not the, the first person to say that because Snoop Dogg said the same thing. He said you got to separate your loved ones from your homeboys. You got your associates, your homeboys, and your loved ones. Right. And then you got to separate all of them. Right. And me, you said the same thing. We might follow certain rules. You feel me? Because like, we like the the our, the people around us, the associates, how we grow up, like certain shit we believe in, but like. When it comes to grind season TV and even best friend TV, it's a, a, a lot of niggas will say, "Oh, we gossiping right now." You feel me? And I don't like to be considered a gossiper, but this is my job. I gotta talk about certain shit. Yeah. You feel me? Even if I, even if I'm not comfortable talking with it, you like 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 even like a little Nas interview or some shit. I I don't really like if I was doing a platform, I wouldn't care for I wouldn't give a shit about what he does. Certain shit that I care about right now, I wouldn't give a fuck about, bro. But with my platform, I have to kind of like tune in to what's going on. Yeah, you feel me? I'm like I said, I I'll definitely cover what I have like what's going on in music in the industry. Yeah, industry business. wise, yeah. But like, to, is, is it something that I'm gonna just listen to on the cuffs? Probably right. not. A lot of these people I don't listen to. It's right. just. A lot of these niggas, you probably look at like these niggas weirdos or something like that. Not bro. even weird. It's just not for me. And right. that's what I, I'm, I'm okay understanding when something's not for me, but I also understand what the market is for it. So it's like, okay, I, all right, this is not for me, but there's a demographic for this, and this demographic listens to my platform, so let me be yeah, able target, to, to yeah. talk about this exactly. with them. Exactly. Exactly. And I use that Black China as an example. I don't give a fuck, no fuck about Black China, but being that I'm a... Hip hop media outlet. I had to speak and on Black it. I had to target it. I had to hip hop baby there. So yeah, she's part of the culture. Regardless exactly. of how people want to feel about her, right. she's definitely part of the culture. Pick yo. Heck yeah, heck yeah. But now overall, that was a dope interview for me. I like yeah. how they was able to joke around, they like, be serious, a little bit straightening. You feel me? According but, to and agree to disagree. Like you can see, two men, two people from two different areas, believe in two different things. They, they they didn't always agree, but they was able. You feel me? Debate about it, and just at the end of the day, still have the same le le level of respect exactly. for each other. And I feel like that's where a lot of, that's where a lot of niggas go wrong, especially and on social media, bro. You you get you have a uh, you disagree with somebody's decision, or they disagree with your decision. Now fuck you, now they want to fight and shoot it out. 
let's go. So that segues us perfectly to Dave Chappelle. Did you listen to the Dave Chappelle stand? Oh, I didn't see it, but I seen what everybody's talk about the uh the comments just like that. How they fired the female from the transgender from Netflix, I think it was right. They didn't fire her, but they they gave her a break. She was a, oh, the transgender, am I mistaken? Yeah, they get, they told her to give her a break and stuff like that. Oh yeah, but um. So basically, Dave Chappelle used his platform, and he he did a, he did he does the thing with the, that only Dave Chappelle can really do. He used some jokes that are very pushing the lines and the boundaries of people' ideologies to bring them back to a point of educating. Yeah, boy, educating. Um, so he was on there. He did the it was a space Jewish joke. He did a joke about uh transgenders, of course. You know, it's, it's Dave. Of it's course. Dave. But he's like, listen, it's crazy that you guys are so willing to cancel the baby, right? Right. What he was saying, he killed somebody in Walmart. But he killed somebody in Walmart. So what? What? What matters more? LGBTQ emotions, or um, the death of, of a black person, even if it's in self defense. Right. It was a human, a black human being's life was lost to the same person. So y'all wasn't in the uproar then. Y'all was still dancing to the song. It was where he kept rapping about killing, uh, shooting someone, shooting a nigga. But y'all, y'all wasn't all up in arms when it came to. Oh, his comments that he said. Yeah, to the comments that he said, which is which is what they. I agree, it's BS. All right. So cool. We got that from Dave. He and then he talked about. He doesn't have issue with transgenders, LGBTQ, or any of that. He has an issue with when they are yeah, punched down and they, everybody else can be the butt of a joke but, but them. them. <laughs> exactly. I agree with her. So that's not... F- and I agree. That's not fair. I, I agree And he said you can be part of LGBTQ community and still be a racist. So... you. It, when it, when it does it ben- when it when it's it not does it benefit you yeah when it does it benefit you it's not an issue but when it benefits you it's an issue he's like come on what about what about the times that I get into a, with someone he use the example and I'll say this that and that and they'll say well n word this that and the third and you can't say this to me because I'm gay <laughs> not me personally this is the example right yeah and he like that's the kind of they weaponize they are weaponizing that way of life, LGBTQ way of life. And everyone everything other letter that come after that. I agree with that. You can't you can't do that because you guys made so much progress and weaponized what y'all do and we got the black community who's been oppressed in this country for hundreds of years. Yeah, I still make jokes about us. You see the president was just racist and saying all types of shit and nobody was upset. So to me I just find it I find it to be a really dope thing because even he he gave a story about his friend, a transgender white woman. Mm. And he, he was saying, I was in there saying my jokes. Then she she also wanted to be a comedian as well. Identify as she. So I'm, say, I'm just using the word that the person identified as. They went on there, bombed for 45 minutes. Then we st- me and them started having a conversation while they're on stage and people start laughing because of their jokes. And it says, I don't need you to understand me, but I need you to just feel what I'm saying is real. And that's it. And that's what helped him understand LGBTQ, specifically trans issues and plight. And that person also was a fan of his. And when he was getting killed for some of his comments on his earlier productions, which when Netflix, that person came to his aid and said, Dave Chappelle is not a, a tra- is not a homophobic, not transphobic or homophobic. Right. He's just, he pushes the line. Yeah, right. He don't, he don't, like, you know, you know that one kid is just, just extra with it. Like, he don't care how, like, again, he, he's, he's okay. He's, uh, he's okay with the backlash that's going to come from the comments he says. Because he understands that this is comedy. And in comedy, there is truth and the funny and the funny is willing to push the lines for us to have really important conversations after mm-hmm. the fact. But like again, they wep the this community weaponizes to what what he was saying, weaponizes it and are not willing to have the conversations with other things, but you pu- you look down and punch down on others that are being oppressed 
and that has been oppressed much longer than you have. And so it's just a crazy thing. And that same friend he was talking about, the trans female, uh, trans female had passed away from suicide. Mm-hmm. Like shortly after they def- she defended him uh, on uh, social media right. and got a bunch of backlash from other trans folks. Twitter is a terrible place, man. I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm not the biggest fan of Twitter. I like, I use it. It's a good platform, but the people on there are not good people. No, that's just, bro. That's because everybody's in touch. Everybody can. Everybody. Yeah. It said, "What's on your mind?" Everybody gonna tell you on your mind. How many people? Is, how many people is on Earth? Like seven billion, right? Something like that. So the, it's like, not. It's not. And it's not even that because people. It's not about what's on your mind because what's on your mind that's fine. You can say what's on your mind. We not and we don't always have to just because you don't agree with someone doesn't it mean make it a wrong. phobia. Oh yeah, because just because I might not agree with someone that's trans or something or some of the, some of their views does not mean I'm afraid of them. I just don't agree with certain things. Right. Just because someone doesn't agree with my lifestyle and they are white doesn't automatically make them a racist. Right. So it's just we we have to be willing to have discussions and conversations and not. Throw a, a label on something right. as soon as someone doesn't agree. Right, I get called all the time. Many times I've been called an asshole. I've been called arrogant because I don't always agree with how some people view things, and I and I view things a little different. And they're like, "Oh, you're arrogant. You're this. You're that." Like, no, it's not. Why can't we have a difficult conversation without me being labeled as something that you don't agree with? Just because I don't agree with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So. That's that's kind of, that's the gist of what he was doing. We do, we gotta stop throwing labels on things just because, because we're having we, a difficult conversation right. and we don't agree. Right. Not, we're I, not made to agree hundred percent of the time. That shit is not possible. And that's a fact. So oh. with that being said, you know, and talk about agree like not agreeing with everything that's been said. I don't agree with the new um superheroes and how they um how they like making I think they made Batman gay. The new one. The so new Batman. This is a new new universe. There's new characters. These aren't the traditional characters. People when they make it a new superhero, uh, get, like the gay, but that don't mean like I'm homophobic. I just don't want that like pushed onto like, the children that I'm gonna raise. So you feel me? But uh, like, and, I know it to should be. Gay it people. should be adult. It's probably gonna be adult cartoons. I don't think it's. I mean, comics not so much for the youth. And I and I understand the representation and things like that. It's just. It's just it's like they just keep pushing it and it's pushing it and forcing it and forcing it. Everything don't gotta be that. Everything doesn't have to be what it is. Like it's things that's been certain things. And I understand you wanna you wanna kinda get away from things and make different universes to make people feel included. That's understandable. Like I remember when Catwoman and Poison Ivy were considered to be in a lesbian couple of years ago. These are not these are things that are not new. It's just that we just gotta figure them out, man. Yeah, but like when back then I remember when I was a little bit young, but I remember back then when they used to ask for like more black characters and cartoons and stuff like that. Yeah. Nobody was nobody was like they wasn't pushing that agenda. No, you get one. You probably got one character of a black person, and then yeah, it, it was what it was from there. Got smoke. I, I don't think I can't really name that many black cartoons and stuff like the Boondocks for real, for real. Yeah, it gets a little it gets real tricky when you try to figure that stuff out. Um, that's that's. Yeah, I, like I said, man, I understand representation matters. It's just all about getting to a place to understand it for real, and accepting, and people not accepting, but just understanding that it's a bunch of different things in the world, and we don't gotta agree on everything. Don't gotta agree on everything. I think you should. You can have, you could you could d- divvy it up with your LGBTQ comics, with your traditional comics that people have been having. And then, I mean, X X Men technically are all black, if you mean real, because right. X Men was about was about uh, Doctor Martin Luther Magneto is uh, Malcolm X and Professor Xavier is Doctor Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. People just don't know that, so they just don't give them those names. Um, what else? NBA though, because I forgot about this. Did you see the fraud that was happening in the NBA? Oh, Terrence Williams, Glenn Big. T.A., yeah. Big Baby, all them guys. I, I mean... Goated. They, they, goated. They goated, man. They, they found, they found they a way to get some extra it, money. They, I, I was saying that, too, but then I see what Shannon Sharp said today about it, or was it a couple of days ago, where Shannon Sharp says, like, bro, like, now that they did that, it's going to be hard for people that really need that service. Yeah, to get, get it. it. You feel me? So now, like, I kind of like, damn, I'm kind of looking from a different perspective. But, yeah, they finessed the NBA, bro. <laughs> yeah, I ain't mad at them. 
I'm not mad at them. Absolutely. Okay, LRG is out here playing a dangerous game. Shout out to Benny the Butcher though, cause uh, they got the they got the, uh, the zip up skull oh, all the way fire. up. I don't, oh yeah, that you wasn't around for that era. That's 2006, 2007, 2008. You were wearing those. That's when everybody was doing bapes, right? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember that thing when I was a little kid. I yeah, think my brother man. had that. A lot of people was getting robbed with these joints on, man. The joints look all the way up. Catch a nice little jug. Shout out to uh, LRG, Dead Series, Benny the Butcher, Holiday Hoodies. Or the Dead Series Hoodies coming around again. I rock with these, too. I definitely might get me one, but somebody going to think they about to get robbed. Jane is crazy. Um, but, yeah, and I, I, I feel it. They go with it for what they did, but it's definitely going to hurt people going forward because... It's going to be different. It's going to be difficult to do those kind of things now. Yeah. It's going to be much more difficult. The Brooklyn D. Uh, job bless to my boy P. My boy Prince, he got surgery. He was having issues uh, walking, and the surgery went well. So congratulations to him. Another but blessings and prayers his way, for sure. Class and money bag, yo, chopping it up. I didn't even see it. They posted a picture. I don't know if I don't know if. It, no, well, money bag yeah was bumping the class murder. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him. If you haven't seen it, we got interviews out. Well, my boy Snacks interview out right now. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that we did not cover. Mm -hmm. We about an hour in. I still gotta watch that Snacks interview. I ain't watch it. Do you, do you watch Fresh and Fit? Do you catch the Kodak drink on Fresh and Fit? Nah, I'm I ain't gonna lie. I've been, I've been doing too much this week. Shirley was talking about, uh, it, they said with, to fuck with Kodak, you would have to fuck two guys at Sniper Game. She used my language. And she said she would do it. I'm not surprised. You know how many females would do some sex? Oh, man, I'm not, that's not, no way to surprise at all, but <laughs> it was just something funny that I've seen. People were like, yo, she really said that? Oh, bruh, man, you must bruh. not know how these groupies work, my brother. Bruh. Before you can fuck, like you know, everybody's trying to get pregnant by the, the pregnant by that dude, bro. by the top guy, by the top guy, boy. They gotta fuck the, the, the right hand man to get to that top guy. Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna do that. Even they get pregnant by the top right guy, he got some money. They valid. You gotta think about it. a lot of females do not want to work, bro. They want to be Instagram mm -hmm. models. A lot of uh, this generation, I'm not gonna say all of them, but this generation has put a lot of women in a space where they think that it's just 2021 also. That confidant thing, you're not going to be a man's private confidant. 2021 black man, we're going to therapy. Um, putting a price on the... <laughs> you know putting a price on, on your sex part that God gave you, it, that's You know what's crazy? One, one time I was, um, I was with Class Murder. This one I did an interview, and we were, like, we were just talking off camera. And he was telling us, like, yo, he was like, he was like you know what's crazy, bro? A, a girl, you a girl make you mad and she'll give you some pussy. You'll forgive her, but uh, like let's like say it's the other way around. You give her some dick, she will still take the dick, but she'll still be mad at you. You gotta go buy her like a Birkin bag. You gotta go buy extra shit. Mm -hmm. It's for her. It's such an apology. Mm -hmm. And all we was, all the guy, all we gonna do is take his pussy and yeah, be happy and, 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 and keep that, go about our day. But that's the thing. Like <laughs> I know it's a joke where it's like, oh, it's my birthday. Oh, pussy again. Ha ha ha. But that's what it would be though. Like. <laughs> It's a lot of things that we, we kind of do want as individuals right. that we don't really get, and it kind of sucks that it's that way. And, and then go back to that, I thought the dude you sent me earlier today, the video, he was talking about what he said. He said, we just, we just get told, stay strong, and that's it. You feel me? Even if mm -hmm. we, we want to uh, be like, say something like, bro, like, what can you really say? Because we, we just got to keep going. And, and, like, you know, and, those are, and those are things that hurt us because it's not about staying strong. It's about being... It's about like, yo, we need rest. Yeah. Even to become a bodybuilder, your muscles, it don't matter how you could work out a lot during the week, but you at some point you need rest. So your muscles could re they could regenerate, they could recover, so you could get maximum effort again. If I'm if I'm not getting any rest at any point in time, how the hell am I ever gonna get better? Right. Everything in life is about it's about it's a, it's everything has a trade off. If all I do is work, 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 then I'm never going to have any time for me. I'm not going to be able to take care of myself. So right. it is what it is, man. So 
I think that's an interview people should watch too. Shout out to the Breakfast Club. Shout out to Charlemagne. Shout out to uh, Envy, Angel Lee. I'm not saying Angel Lee named that last because she's a woman. That's just how it came out of my head <laughs> when I was saying it. Yeah. Shout out to all of them. Um, They're doing phenomenal work over there. And that was a really amazing interview. And I got a lot of insight watching that one. Well, I got to go finish watching that. Oh, yeah. Nah, but that's it. That's all we got for this week. That's all I got, man. I'm man. exhausted for real. Yeah, tune into another episode of the best on soup show ever, man. Right. Hey yo, if y'all want us to review some of y'all music, let us know. If y'all got any topics y'all wanna throw at us or anything anybody, y'all wanna hear anybody? y'all talk, y'all wanna call in. Let yeah. us know. Y'all can always come on the show and to call in for me and have discussion. If you wanna double back on topic, you don't dis- and you disagree. We we open the discussions, we open the debates. And hey, we, we can agree to disagree, we can do, we'll do whatever. You feel Excuse me? me. We can any, find any, the counter, uh, anybody you listening point. to, anybody listening to right now. Anybody I listen to right now? Um, let me see. I just found out about this dude FCG Heem. FCG Heem? Yeah, I think he out of further. He signed a hundred K. I've been listening to a lot of Drake or the Ruler. Drake or the Ruler got some tough joints. I'm a YG fan. I don't pick sides though, but I know. Oh, they, him they beefing out there. I think him and YG not on the same page. Oh, okay. I, I, I I'm just not really tuning into him for real for like. Yeah. Like Drake I'm, or the Ruler. I think Drake or the Ruler makes music with Blast as well. Blast. Like Drake the Ruler. I think he's mad by Wack 100 because I know his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying he makes music with Blast and stuff like that. Yeah. I uh, listen to Maxo Cream. Maxo so Cream. That's yeah. my guy. I definitely rock with his music. Oh, Larry, I listen to that. Larry man. June, of course, is, in, is in, always in rotation. I listen to Freddie Big, Gibbs. Ma- have you heard of Major Nine? Mm, I think I heard the name, but I don't know if I know any songs. He, he's right. a football player. He's in the NFL right now. I've got his real name. He made great music, like great music. Like, I just found out he was in the league right now. He's he's doing his thing. Um, Montreal. She from the town. She dropped mm-hmm. a new song, Jaded. I listen to Juke Juice. You feel me? Yeah, Juke Juice is dope. You feel me? Uh, Layla Day, her project is out now. I spoke about it before and posted the single she had put out. But the official project is out now and it's doing well. She's actually on a press run. I'm going to see if we can get her up here one of these days and just talk about what she did with that project because yeah. it's a phenomenal project. From what I've heard, I have to finish the project. I've been just so busy. Best know what's going on behind <laughs> the scenes. All right. It's been a lot, and as soon as the things come through official, I will let y'all all know here man, first. So. God gonna make that happen. That's a, that's a fact, man. We just working, we just getting a positive place, and it's just a lot of hard work paying off. So right. let's get this going. Oh yeah, I want y'all PB two records, and let me not forget my boy. He just dropped the project for every your name. He tough. It was an album. De- de- How was the Young Boy debut. project? Did you listen? I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't get the chance to like really like really sit down and listen to it because I just been moving around too much. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I'm still listening to Don the whole time. <laughs> like, I'm listening to Don the. NCLB. I'm still listening to Don the. NCLB. I was listening to uh the joint with with Gun Conway and uh and um Con- yeah Kanye Conway and Kanye. <laughs> That's funny. And then uh Conway had a show last night. I talked to my my guy DJC from Rochester. Mark Star performed. It was dope. They put on a show. Had one of the be- with better performances that night. Shout out to my, uh, Rob Gage's drop. Rob Like Get Rob 2. If you ain't listened to that yet, you bugging. It's fire. And uh, I've been hearing a lot of positive reviews from L.A. about the claw. Rob Gates, Riggs, Mooch and them, and about Snacks. Shout out to them. They, 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 when Snacks performed, they was yelling encore. So... And that was something they put on together on their own in L.A. And people said, Boom Bap is dead. Boom Bap ain't dead. Y'all just ain't doing it right. But we about to get up out of here, man. This is the best whoop show ever. And we're going to let Best do the outro. And y'all know where to find us on social media. Like, comment, subscribe. You feel me? Follow on VizSwoop underscore GSO. This Viz Swoop's not everything because if you put that, you'll find me. Oh, yeah. V-I-S-S-W-O-O-O-P-S. Oh, I am wild. That's beautiful. And Grind CG underscore TV, right? Yeah, just find underscore us. TV. You find us. You feel me? Best Queen TV. You feel me? You got, oh, yeah. You got any other interviews out besides this next interview? N- uh, I mean, I got I got the uh, one I did with Zona 1K that's still up. All right. Uh, from He's from Fort Myers, Florida. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Hey, uh, Zo. Zona. Haitian, my, Haitian boy. He's, my, he's, a, he's a dope artist. Phenomenal. He definitely got like Jack Boy Kodak Black like vibes, but with his own twist on there. So... Um, if you like stuff like that, if you like stuff like uh, what Young and Nate got, he got things, we'll things in that nature. That. But he's just he's his own entity, so he's not a carbon copy. He do his own thing, 
Still got the um, what's the old boy name? Uh, oh, what's that old boy? The OG man, arsonist with the heat makers interview. If you ain't seen that yet, y'all need to tune into that. That's probably one of the best interviews I dropped this year from myself. I would say in general, but I don't want to get too to my own horn too much. But that was definitely a dope interview. What you got? Anything you got coming? I know you got some stuff coming up, Raz. Come yeah, on, I got um, what I got coming up. I just dropped the um Jay Hendo interview. You yeah, feel me? I seen that one. You feel me? Hendo's my guy. Hendo's dope. Um, as far as that right there, I probably got a couple of upcoming interviews. They just haven't been locked in yet. Yeah. That I just got locked in. Recaps, so. cause I know you've been to some shows. I I, I went to the Blizzy Banks, but I think I talked about that. Uh, yeah. I didn't. I, I tried to get some money back, yo. It just didn't work. But Capella Gray coming here, um, on the Sunday. I'll see, see how I feel. I know Wu Tang coming out here. I'm trying to go to that show for Did, sure. Drizzy Wright coming out here in a couple of days. I might go to the Capella Gray show. I just might. Right. Who's I, throwing a concert? I I I don't I don't know their name, but they come with Perko performing, Red Bay performing. I seen uh Lil West perform at the Money Bag Yo joint. Yeah, I think he was performing Lil Star Smiley, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Um, Tulsi is supposed to be coming um to Syracuse, but I just got the word that he might got. I don't don't quote me on that because I ain't seen no official article, but I got a word that might be canceled in Syracuse. And you got the album homecoming with Fabio, Dirk. Yeah, that's college okay. stuff. I ain't, you ain't gonna catch me in too many of them joints no more. Nah, I'm da- I'm at that joint. Yeah, that's your age group, nigga. Mm-hmm. You should be at that. K Flock. Oh yeah, I've been listening to K Flock and Be Love and all of them too. That I fuck with that sound. I don't got no problem. Like, oh, K Flock got he make joints. It's the same for me. Word. So. Yeah, but we out though. We out here. Peace.